Cześć Dile and welcome to In Conversation with Tibet TV. This is Sakina Bhatt. For today's episode, we will be discussing about cyber security to create awareness on cyber attacks that happens frequently to CTA staffs and the Tibet supporters around the world. And to have this discussion, we have with us the Director of Tibetan Computer Resource Center of Central Tibetan Administration, Namgyal Lekshala. Namgyal Lekshala, welcome to our show. Thank you, Saginala, for having me here. So, Lekshala, we hear that uh, cyber attacks has been an important tool of warfare these days. So, how frequently do CTA receive such attacks? Cyber attacks are happening all over the world for different reasons. And CTA and Tibetans are no exception to such attacks. And with regards to the cyber attacks to the CTA and Tibetans, which are known to the outside world after the GhostNet report published by the SecDef and the Citizen Lab in 2009, and with regards to the frequency of the attacks, uh, in terms of emails, uh, we could say that the malicious emails that the CTA receives is almost every other day. So we could safely say like 15 to 20 attacks almost every month. Mm -hmm. And in terms of websites, uh, we could say like whenever we have the, some important events, like the His Holiness of Dalai Lama's birthday uh, on 6th of July, Tibetan Democracy Day on 2nd September and the confirmation of the Nobel Peace Prize to His Holiness Dalai Lama on 10th December and the Tibetan National Uprising Day on 10th March. And besides those uh, events which we have regularly uh, every year, uh, whenever the city leadership or the city president visits foreign countries and meets with the foreign leaders, we receive the attacks on our websites and also when we have the important events like Thank You India, or thank you America, or thank you Australia. Uh, in a nutshell, we could say like whenever we have some important events that CTA observes or the, any Tibetan NGOs or the Tibetans observe during that time, the websites get attacks. So how does the attack happen and in what form and disguise? Uh, in terms of emails, attacks are usually happens through the social engineering or phishing attacks that we oh, call What do you mean by phishing attacks? In simple terms, we could say it's deceiving people to reveal their uh, personal information or the confidential data, sending the malicious emails or attachments, pretending to be from the CTA office or the CTA officials, but they actually use their personal Gmail or Yahoo account. Uh, that means mostly whenever we receive such attacks, we have the emails with the display name as the name of CTA officials or the name of the CTA office and then the actual email address comes from something at the rate gmail.com so it is not the something at tibet.net and the link that is sent on the emails are kind of phishing because they tend to send the fake uh, gmail or any of the email link and then they get the username and password upon entering on those fake website link. Oh, so uh, what you mean is that if the email is at the rate gmail.com, so and so at the rate, at the rate gmail.com, then uh, there is a chance for the email to be fake. Especially when the email claiming to be from the city office or the city officials. Okay. If the email says that, okay, this email is from the CTA, CTA mm -hmm. then the domain should be tibet.net. If the email is from any individuals, then we cannot just say that they, this is fake the email. email. Yes. Okay. So the email has to be uh, so and so, the person that we know, so and so at the rate tibet.net. If we have the domain name as tibet.net, then it's genuine. Then we could say it claim is genuine, to genuine, claim to be genuine. If the particular email gets compromised, then we cannot 100% say this is genuine because attackers also could use that email to send the malicious email to other users. What is the most recent attack faced by the Central Tibetan Administration? In terms of emails, uh, the most recent attacks is the Exile Rat campaign that the report published by the Cisco uh, Teles team. And in terms of websites, the most recent attack on our Tibet.net was on the denial of service attacks on the 13th of February when the Office of Tibet Washington DC and the International Campaign for Tibet was Organizing was having the Thank You America event. So during that time, our Tibetan net was attacked under the denial of service. Mm -hmm. So, and in terms of the attack on our phone, on the WhatsApp, 
uh, we received the attacks on the November 2018, uh, which was alerted to us by the researchers from Citizen Lab. And we alerted all our users, and we came to know that the several of our users has received the malicious link on their WhatsApp account, claiming to be journalists from Hong Kong, and they wanted to interview on the self-emulation inside Tibet or other Tibet-related issues. And they exchanged a couple of messages on the WhatsApp, and they sent the malicious link mm -hmm. to get no more details about the interview that they're going to have. So if if user have click on those links, then their phone gets compromised. Whatever information they have on their phone are all be accessible to the attackers. Do you keep a record of all the attacks that's made and how many attacks usually occur in a month? We do keep a record. Our malware and forensic lab takes the sample of all the malicious files and keep a record on the lab. And in terms of the number of attacks that we receive, as I said earlier, or in terms of emails, uh, we receive like 15 to 20 almost every month. How does your department, which is the Tibetan Computer Resource Center, tackle with such issues? I could explain like we divide it in two parts. One is technical parts. We do almost all the technical parts by the our departments, which is like analyzing the malicious files. And through that, we get the bad URLs or the bad IPs and we block those on our firewall. We also get those list of bad IPs and URLs from the independent researchers and the researchers from Citizen Lab and we block those. And we do harden our IT infrastructure or monitor our IT infrastructure. And besides those uh, technical part, we educate our users on the basic digital hygiene or the basic cyber security from time to time. And also we send alert messages to all our users whenever we detect some attacks. So Lakshala, who do you think is making all these attacks and for what purpose? Uh, it is quite obvious that the attackers who attack the central Tibetan administration or the Tibetans are from our adversaries uh, because attacking the CTA or the Tibetan peoples, they don't get any financial gains, So, which is kind of clear from the reports the many of the researchers have published uh, for, on the cyber attacks to the CTA and the Tibetans. So, denial of service attacks that they receive on our websites, when we check those IP address origin or the IP's registration details, um, in most cases those IPs are registered in China. Can you tell us about the workshops that you normally hold every year about the awareness on cyber attacks? We, we hold the workshops to all the CTA officers in Dharamsala, uh, to the, all the CTA officials on how they could secure their email online, and what are the best practices they do when they use their computers, how to uh, use the social media account safely, and how to secure their smartphones. We give all these basic security-related stuff to the city staff. So how important do you think it is to hold these workshops and create awareness on cybersecurity? Uh, it is very important to create the cyber awareness to the users. Because we were told by the many of the cybersecurity experts that the, whatever the security measures that we take technically, if the users are not aware and they do whatever they think is right, then you cannot be secure at all. So along with the security measures that we take technically, users have to be aware on all the security measures so, so that we could have the maximum security. So what precautions should be taken by the users in order to avoid such cyber attacks? Uh, there are a number of precautions that users can take. Uh, number one, uh, users have to be very careful when they receive the link or the attachments on the emails. It is always better not to open any link or attachment they receive on the email unless 100% they are sure that those links or attachments they receive are genuine or they should check with the sender whether they have shared those links or the addresses or the emails. And these days it's not only the emails, right? Mm -hmm. Because we are using social media accounts, we are using smartphones. So you also receive the link on your social media accounts or the smartphones. So especially on social media, uh, there will be loss of the shortened URLs. So in shortened URLs, you are not sure what exactly is behind that shortened URL. Mm -hmm. So you should be very careful when you click on the shortened URL. Along with that, then 
users have to enable the two-factor authentication on their accounts. What is two-factor authentication? It's an extra layer of security. Once you enter your password, it asks to enter the security code or the authenticate via apps or authenticate via the security keys if you registered your account with the security key. So it's an extra layer of security after you enter your password. So these days, most of the online platforms provide the two-factor authentications. So users have to enable the two-factor authentication on your email, on your social media account like Facebook, Twitter, and almost all the accounts that they have on online. And thirdly, users have to be very cautious when they when some certain Tibetan important events comes up during those times that Tibetans and the Tibetan supporters are targeted. And fourthly, uh, you have to use the genuine or free and open source software because if you use the genuine software and free and open source software, you get the regular updates and you have to update it regularly. So basically what you're trying to say is that it depends upon an individual to uh, check their own security. Yes, if you take care of the four points that I mentioned earlier, uh, we could safely say that you are 70 to 80 percent safe online. So as a director of TCRC, what is a piece of advice or a message to the viewers around the world on the awareness of the cyber attacks? I request all our users to be secure online. And when I say secure online, users should, should not think that the security of your email or your computer or your smartphone is the job of the IT professionals. Uh, all the individuals who use smartphones or your emails or your computers should take care of their own security. And basic security is most effective uh, security that one can take. And also, as I mentioned earlier, if you receive any email in the name of the CTA by using the CTA official name or the CTA office, please check the email very properly. If the email doesn't come from tibet.net, then treat that email as a fake email. And also, if you receive any email with the domain tibet.net with the link or attachments, please check back with the sender whether they have sent such emails or not, because we have seen that many of the attacks that they do on the Tibetans or Tibet supporters or the CTA officials are through the name of the CTA officials or the CTA office. And lastly, please be careful whenever certain important events comes up. For example, now the 68th Tibetan National Uprising Day is coming up soon on 10th March 2019. I'm 100% sure that during that time, the attackers will take advantage and then send the malicious link or the attachments to all our supporters or the Tibetans around the world, saying that this is a statement from the Kashag or the Tibetan Parliament Exile about the 68th Tibetan National Uprising Day. So please be very careful whenever such events comes up and be safe online. And if we take the security seriously, I'm 100% sure that we could minimize the attacks to the CTA and the Tibetans effectively. Okay, Lakshila, thank you so much for coming to the show. It was really nice having this conversation today. Thank you, Sakinana. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next episode of In Conversation with Tibet TV.